assalamu alaikum and good morning class uh, welcome to another class uh, another session for a level media studies and where we would be covering media regulations uh, with respect to games video games uh, let's get started um, if you look at the specimen paper according to the latest slavers update uh, you will have to answer three questions and if you talk about media regulations you should refer to one or more media forms so in order to get 15 marks or near to 15 we would definitely go for more than one media form the first one would be films and the second one can be video games however we may also go for the third uh, possible form as well in order to ensure our marks as close as possible to uh, 15 marks that's why so today we're going to explore uh, video games the dynamics of video games the regulators the case studies uh, what this whole thing is all about let's explore it so starting with uh, major regulatory bodies uh, just like when we started uh, a film so we came to know about BBFC ASA Ofcom and so on so in games there are different kind of uh, regulatory bodies the first one is esrb the entertainment software rating board this is an american self-regulatory organization like i already told you that most of the regulatory bodies are now self-regulatory means that uh it's not legal requirement for a game maker uh to get rating from such a board however if they do so there are more chances to avoid uh controversies and uh, financial losses and long-term problems so it's an american regulatory body uh with bright content ratings to consumer video games this rb was established in 1994 by esa uh this is actually the software uh entertainment association they themselves made this uh, regulatory body just like the filmmaking community of britain make made bbfc well, in response to criticism of controversial video games with excessively violent or sexual content. So the first um, regulatory body is this. The second one is PEGI, Pan European Game Information. Uh, it's a video gaming content rating system established to help European consumers make informed decisions when buying video games or apps through the use of age recommendations and content descriptors. It was developed by an interactive software federation of Europe, ISFE, and came into use in April 2003. In, it replaced many national age rating systems with a single European system. So, you know, in Europe, there are several nations. They had their own rating systems for video games. So uh, the PEGI replaced all those local and uh, national rating systems, and the, the whole Europe uh, now follows PEGI. The PGA system is now used in 39 countries and later on after Europe, uh, since their regulations and their guidelines were quite comprehensive and quite uh, based on a uh, psychological impact of games on kids or teenagers, uh, the harmful and the positive effects they have thoroughly studied and made the rules that is why many countries which are even outside Europe they adopted PEGA, that's what they're saying, 39 countries, and is based on code of conduct, a set of rules to which every publisher using the PEGI system is contractually committed. PEGI self-regulation is composed by five age categories and eight content descriptors that advise the suitability of content of a game for a certain age range based on the game content. So normally these are the um, you know symbols or descriptors uh, which are usually uh, placed on the DVD cover of a video game same goes to the online version of that game like 12 16 18 and then bad language violence and even substance use which is you can also be called as drugs the, the, the third regulatory which we are going to study is the VSC Video Standards Council, also known as VSC Rating Board, is an administrator of the PEGID system of age rating of for video games. It was established in 1989 and has been responsible for age ratings of video games sold in UK since 2012. So, uh, UK was part of uh, European Union 
uh, you know, af after Brexit, they got apart three years back, probably two or three years back. But still, uh, PEGA system is there, and they have their own specific VSC, Video Standards Council, uh, which uh, supervise PEGA, PEGA system because um, PEGA for Europe and there's an upper umbrella that is VSC, which is purely UK based. Well, GRA, another regulator, Gaming your Games Regulating Authority, is a sub arm of Video Standards Council and exists to specially uh, license the release of 12, 16, 18 PEGA related video games in the UK. Games which carry a PEG 12, 16, or 18 rating cannot be sold or hide to persons below the respective age bar. This helps to ensure the parents can choose age appropriate games for their children. So these are uh, like four regulators which uh, you people should know and you should be talking about them in your uh, you know, response. And obviously they carry marks. Uh, I'm going to take you to uh, a snapshot of a, and then, okay, maybe in the end of the lesson, okay. Now let's move on to the introduction of the whole uh, document or the case study and this handout. In just a few decades, video games have grown from a niche market into one of the largest entertainment industries. I say for your information, uh, gaming industry has more revenue. I mean, it's more rich than Hollywood. You will be shocked. You know, you might have heard Hollywood spend millions of dollars and they earn millions of dollars uh, out of video, uh, video films and, you know, uh, the sequel of films like Marvel movies and stuff like that. But you would be shocked to know that gaming industry is more rich and more bigger industry than Hollywood. Uh, because the, the audience, uh, you know, is huge, even huge than films. And actually, you know, film runs through uh, cinema tickets and, and stuff like that, but games are expensive thing to purchase and buy. Well, so, uh, however, it is, its transformation has brought with the same regulatory problems that every large industry encounters sooner or later. And like most other industries, gaming regulatory woes are a combination of internal and external threats. This is right. Video games ratings are mandatory under UK law, the Game Rating Authority, GRA, which is part of the Video Standards Council, VSC rates games using the PEGA system. In 2015, UKIE research revealed that just two out of five parents buy their children age appropriate games. Only two out of five, which is like 20%, uh, yeah, 20% out of 100%, which is extremely bad. Voluntary regulation, you know, what is this thing all about? You already know it. Voluntary rating system adopted by the video games industry, such as ESRB rating system in the UK and US and Canada, not UK, in US and Canada established in 1994 and Pan-European Gaming Information PEGI rating system in Europe established in 2003. So you, you can see that Canada and US uh, predicted the positive and negative effects of games long before uh, the Europe and Britain did. And they are aimed at informing parents about the types of games their children are playing or are asking to play. Some ratings of controversial games indicate that they are not targeted at young children. Mature M or adult only AO is the US or 15 or 18 is the, in the UK, right? So now you should be able to identify if this is M written, it means it's from US because they either write M or AO, age appropriate or adults only. However, adults only, sorry but in the UK, they are just tried 15 or 18, just like films. The packaging warns such games should not be sold to children in the US. ESRB ratings are not legally binding. Like I told you, they're, they're self or voluntary regulatory. They're not legal requirement. But many retailers take it upon themselves to refuse the sale of these games to minors, which is good. In the UK, the BBFC ratings are legally binding. UK retailers also enforce the PEGI rating which are not legally binding. Oh, let me tell you, this line might be confusing for you that on one hand, I told you BBFC is voluntary, then why there's legal binding? You know, game makers of, okay, let's talk about filmmakers. Filmmakers, uh, they have option. They have no legal binding 
to get their film certified by BBFC. However, if a film is certified, the, the film renting business guys or cinema guys are legally bound not to sell that kind of film or product to uh, students or kids which are not from the appropriate age. So that, that is the legal binding in that case only. So same goes to, you know, uh, game makers. They have uh, no legal requirement to get themselves uh, uh, certified or uh, age rated by these, uh, you know, voluntary regulatory bodies. However, if a game does, then uh, retailers are legally bound in UK, not in the US. So let's talk about, let's dig deep and further explore about UK. Video games ratings are mandatory under the law. UK law, the Game Regulating Authority, GRA, which is part of Video Standards Council, rates games using the PEGI system. Games which carry a PEG, PEGI 12, 16, or 18 rating cannot be sold or hired to person below the respective age bar. This helps to ensure that parents can choose age appropriate game for the children, like we told, we talked already about. In 2015, UKIA research revealed that two, oh, okay, sorry, we, I think we have already done this part, uh, I, and we have to, you know, jump from here. Half of the parents surveyed let their kids play games that had an unsuitable rating. Just under a quarter, 24% of them believe it is important to examine games rating because they feel the game content should be suitable for children because they had general perception that games mean something entertaining, something cool, something relaxing. They have never thought the harmful effects of a game or a violent game uh, can have on the kids, you know, on the mentality of the kids. So now the, the awareness is going on and now people are understanding the importance. BBFC bows out as pan-European gaming information rating system becomes legally enforceable in the UK from 30 July 2012 onwards. So PEGI, like I told you earlier, is now it's legally enforceable. Retailers that sell video games to children are now liable for imprisonment or a fine under a tough new age classification system designed to crack down on violent and unsuitable content. Under the new rules that, uh, that came into force on Monday, all Monday means this 30th July, all games sold in the UK will now be regulated under a system called PEGA, you know, sold. This is the most important part, not made or developed. Developers are not legally bound. The sellers are legally, legally bound because, you know, according to constitution, they cannot stop any form of art or creativity or freedom of expression. However, the selling is a business. They have a lot of control on the business thing. Like you cannot sell weapons of mass destruction. You, can, uh, not, you cannot sell uh, antiques uh, which belong to museums, you know, or no, you cannot sell products which, has, which, are, which belong to the category of not for sale thing. So same goes to they can legally bound uh, or legally bind, sorry, uh, the, the sellers, the business community. Well, uh, which makes it illegal to sell 12 rated video games to children under the age of, for the first time. Under the regulation, retailers could face a prison sentence of up to six months and a fine of up to 5,000 pounds. Wow, this is like nearly a million, Pakistani million probably, yeah. Yeah, for selling a game to someone under the age rating classification. Let's talk about Canada. Obviously, in the exam, you would like to impress your examiner that you know much about Britain, Canada, Australia, China. I'm not encouraging or saying that you have to talk about every country, but generally, if you write briefly about each or few countries, it will be a positive impression. Secondly, these handouts belong to previous labels uh, where you had to write about like for like five pages um, for getting marks closer to 50 marks. That is why this much content is there in this new and this previous older handout. I'm on my way to make a brief and simplified handouts with that will be aligned with the new syllabus. So it will take, take some time. Anyways, so uh, moving down to Canada, all of the provinces and territories in Canada voluntarily adopt the ESRB rating system for rating the same as in the United States, obviously the neighboring countries, St. Perry and uh, McClellan don't have a formal video game rating system, but receive games from Canada, which uses ESRV. So when they are receiving games from Canada, uh, so those games would be already following Canadian regulations. 
while China. Video game consoles were banned in mainland China in June 2000. This ban was finally lifted in January 2014 after 14 years. However, the Chinese would still police video games. Police means check and supervise, can I check the content. Uh, aren't they uh, hostile to Chinese culture according or against the Chinese government or into the perception in the mindset of Chinese government as for their perception, so they keep check. Reportedly by Bloomberg, uh, metaphorically, Speaking, Chai Wu, head of Chinese uh, Ministry of Culture, said, We want to open the window of a crack to get some fresh air, but we still need a screen to block the flies and mosquitoes, which means that we will constantly keep check on uh, such kind of um, entertaining products. Censorship of video games in China often relate to unfavorable views of war, history, and government. Obviously, if you can, if you know, in many US movies, uh, war movies, uh, they either show Russia as an enemy or sometimes nowadays China. So such movies or ideas get banned by the government, uh, blaming, blaming them to be partial or biased. Several video games have been banned in China for these reasons. In 2004, the video games Heart of Irons was banned as the Ministry of Culture deemed the game portrayal of World War II to be distorted. In 2013, the Chinese ministry banned the video game Battlefield 4 as they claim it misrepresented China and was an attempt to smear Chinese, yeah, China's image. So it happens. U.S. and territories, the U.S., uh, Puerto Rico, and uh, Samoa, Gom, Virgin Islands, and Northern Marine Islands all voluntarily comply with ESRB, ESRB rating system. So these islands are actually not uh, in the, they don't come in the territory of US. They are neighboring islands. They are their own indigenous people. I mean, the native people who had been living and still uh, they don't have any territorial control or political control of US. However, they go with US rules and regulations generally. You know, if you have, if you have a big neighbor, you automatically start to follow their, uh, you know, rules. Obviously they're made with proper research. Well, uh, let's move on to some historical background of video games and uh, the violations they did and how were they uh, got into negative limelight and so on. Well, the first major, uh, major controversy over video games in the US was the early 1990s when games such as Most Combat and Night Trap released which were known for scenes that would uh, be considered too violent or too sexual for kids. The issue regarding video games eventually made it into the US Congress after a proposal to have a government commission to establish video games rating and an interactive digital software association, IDSA, was established by major video game corporations. They voluntarily made this association and presented a ESRB to the Congress, which was approved and would become the standard for video game ratings. You know, in order to get any change in a law and get serious or severe setback and restrictions by the government, they themselves acted timely and made their own association to handle such cases on their own. Well, Jack Thompson, an American anti-video game activist, particularly against violence and sex in video games, had has criticized violent video games, claiming that playing violent video games lead to teenage, teenagers replacing those behaviors in the real world. This is fact. He often represented victims or parents of victims in cases regarding shooting, usually blaming the actions of the pre, uh, perpet, uh, perpetrators having played with violent video games, you know, those, uh, the criminals were found to be related to video games. Thompson also supported a campaign that tried to stop release of Bully. Bully was actually an action adventure video game was released on 2017, October 2006 for PlayStation 2. Bully's title and gameplay feature inspired controversy among parents and educators who noted that adult content is in previous Rockstar games. Rockstar, I, I'm sure you know, they're a very big, big well-known game-making studio. Uh, games include the Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas, and Hot Coffee uh, mini-game controversy. 
So in 2013, you know why we are discussing this? Because you should know the historical background. This will give you confidence in the exam and general understanding that why games are so important and why they are important to be controlled or banned or supervised or um, certified and what harmful effects they can cause. So this is little history and how different countries I have are having different kinds of regulatory bodies and regulations, either voluntary or, uh, you know, uh, compulsion or compulsory. So, uh, let, okay, in 2013, the European Software Association, ESA, the, uh, the lobbying group of the video game industry has, actually these are those people or group who create lobby. Lobby means kind of a mafia or uh, bribe uh, different entities of governments, ministers and lawmakers. And even they create, uh, you know, they manipulate market certain market, video game market. So these are those people actually who are quite influential in politics. So they established, they enlisted over 5,000 members to video game voters network. I mean, they introduced 5, 500,000, 5 lakh video game players who voted in the favor of games. A grassroots lobbying group to mobilize gamers to act against public policy that may negatively impact on the gaming industry. So they uh, voted and showed their, uh, you know, voting power to parliament to stop them introducing any uh, legislation or law that may impact their business and or industry. The VGV, the Violent Video Games, was launched in 2006 by ESA and uses social media sites like Facebook and Twitter to inform members or, uh, of uh, allies and opponents. In 2013, the ESA spent over 3.9 million US dollars on lobbying, including but not limited to against VVG legislation. This included opposing a bipartisan federal bill that would direct the National Academy of Sciences to study the effects all uh, form of violent media. Such bills themselves had come under criticism from some scholars for pressuring scientists to find specific outcomes rather than studying the cases neutrally. Yes, these kind of associations, they spent money, uh, they bribe scientists and lawmakers to keep the negative impact of the games hidden under the carpet and only talk about the neutral, you know, uh, impression and neutral effects. So this ring ends to, uh, you know, this thing, moving on uh, after history, US government legislation, what this is all about. The regulation of video games have been historically supported by politicians such as Joel uh, Lieberman and Hillary Clinton who have pushed legislation for gaming uh, regulatory regulations. No video game console manufacturer has allowed any game market. AO, age, uh, you know, appropriate uh, to published in North America. However, PC gaming service Steam has allowed AO titles, uh, you know, edit or adult only actually. Titles such as, uh, sorry, I'm a little tired right now of talking, that's why my brain functions are getting down. Anyways, age, uh, you know, the adult only uh, uh, titles such as Hatred to be punished, uh, sorry, to be published on its platform. So, None of them has allowed, okay? according to the legislation or any regulation, they don't allow any game that is hatred or hatred or racism. No major retailers are willing to sell age, adult only ratings, rate game, gaming or games. However, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was rated adult only after the presence of the hot coffee add-on became evident. The add-on was Later removed on the game rated M. Okay? May I miss mature? Sensible, sensible guys. And AO means adult only. So some controversial video games. Uh, I have tried to place a list of games. Obviously, I know that you won't be able to remember most of them. That is why I have, gave, I have shared quite a many. So that if you have 4, 5, 3, 4 years, you have to write about it. It will be a win-win situation. Well, uh, 
uh, let's have a break here and I will release uh, the second recorded version of this topic uh, in a while. Let me take a break. So see you in a while. Bye bye. Love